Hello again, you are watching Beginner's Guide to JPG. This is Lesson 7, Command Line JPG. In this module we'll be learning about how to use JPG without software like Enigma. Uh, GP JPG is actually a command line program. Uh, it doesn't really come with a GUI by default. But it is possible to do absolutely everything you do with JPG using just the command line. So let's learn how to do that. First we'll look at GPG version. By typing GPG2 dash dash version we can see which version of GPG2 we're using. Wonderful. We can also view what public keys we've acquired and put in our own keyring using the GPG2 dash dash list keys command. And we can also use the dash dash list secret keys command to view our own private key. Activity seven is 17, I mean, is to view your own GPG version and what public private keys you have. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you've never seen how to use a terminal before, it's basically this little icon here. And then you type the commands you want. I've already actually typed them, so I can press the up key to find them. First, GPG dash dash version results in that command. Then we list our public keys. Here we see bills and GPG schools key. Finally, we list the secret keys, which is just Bill's key for this virtual machine. And yeah, if you've never seen anyone use a command line before, that's basically how it's done. Moving back to the lecture. Um, viewing your fingerprints. You obviously know that viewing your fingerprints is very important for verification and being sure that you have the right public keys. So that's how you view the public um, the the fingerprints I mean for both of your public keys, yours and your partner's. <coughs> Creating key pairs, uh, you've seen how to create a key pair in Enigma, it's also possible to do it in command line and have it added to your key ring. Here we see the gen key command being used, all the normal inputs being put in, RSA by RSA, 4096 bits, two year expiry. And yeah, here we see creating a revocation certificate. Now in Enigma, you're prompted to do this after creating a key pair, but with command line, you're not. You're expected to do it under your own intuition. So that's how you do it. You create a revocation certificate that you can later used to revoke your file, I mean revoke your key pair. Importing public keys. Let's say you want to import someone else's public key that they've given you. This is how you do it by command line. You can either do it from a key server if they choose to use a key server or if they've given you a ASCII file. That's how you do it. In the second example there, the image also shows you the ASCII file being imported. Yeah. Sweet. Um, importing is also important when other people sign your key, obviously, and you want to import the signed key over your current key. Exporting your public key. Let's say you want to export a public key. Perhaps you've signed a public key that you want to give back to someone, or you're going to give them your own key. This is how you do it. First you list the keys, then you get the key ID from the pub line, which would look like that. As an example there, uh, that's your key ID. So to do it to a key server, you would just plug the key ID in there. To do it to the command line, you could use the email address and export armor, like that example just shows you there. To print it to a command line, uh, you could then copy it and send it through any transmission media or you could just save it to a file uh, or you could save it directly to a file using the final example. That basically takes the output of this command and puts it into a file. <coughs> Neat. Signing and setting trust levels for people's public keys can be done in command line as well. Here's how you do it dash dash interactive dash dash edit key then the email address of the person you want to sign and set a trust level for. 
you'll then be you'll then reach kind of like a command line inside a command line where you type sign uh, you'll be prompted do you really want to sign yeah okay after you've done that you use command trust it'll prompt you for what trust level you want to set and then confirmation again then finally you go command save which saves the changes you've made to that key awesome listing signatures Burra key dash dash list dash sigs your email address you can use that to view the signatures you've collected on your own public key awesome feel free to do that now do you not have any signatures well you should get some friends to gpg with and then you can get them to sign your keys fun right We've shown you how to export public keys, but you can also export private keys. Uh, when you do this, it's important to keep that file somewhere offline. With the private key, not with the public key, but with the private key, it's good to keep a copy of it offline as well. This means if your key ring gets lost, for example, someone steals your laptop or your laptop blows up or it gets sucked into a void and then goes to another dimension or something, you can use your private key and your revocation certificate to revoke your public key even if you've lost your key ring which is handy so activity 19 you are going to export use the previous commands mentioned to export your public and private keys back them up in an offline storage device if you like you can keep them where you kept your revocation certificate so go on go do that done all right sweet refreshing all your keys if you're using key servers and all your partners are using key servers you might want to use the refresh keys command this will basically probe your nearest key server to see if there are any more modern or more recent uh, public keys that people have created for themselves decrypting a file let's say we have an encrypted file that's been encrypted for our private key and we want to decrypt it that's how we do it, basically. Um, just follow the prompts. Encrypting a message. Let's say we want to encrypt a message to send it to someone else. Here we see an example how to do that. This example has two recipients. Um, it's possible to omit one of the recipients, though. Um, so you could for example just have your recipient there so they could decrypt it but you could not decrypt it that's possible you can you can only set one recipient if you want you don't have to set yourself as well and finally we see the file name there at the end of the command which is the text to be encrypted here we see an example of that happening note the unencrypted file would still remain on your computer so it's really important that you shred it if you're going to encrypt any data it's important that you get rid of unencrypted copies this is how you shred a file, shred-uv-n1 file name. This basically means u removes the overwritten file after it's, after it's overwritten, v gives you detailed output, and n means do it one time, just to save time. Um, a lot of file systems don't work well with shred, ext3 and ext4 kind of work well with shred. Um, it doesn't delete the metadata, but it does delete the physical file, which is okay. Um, for extra security, you should use disk encryption, like I showed you in the installation guide. Uh, that'll help protect any metadata of deleted files that accumulates on your disks. Moving along, encrypting a file. You can use GPG to, of course, encrypt files. By doing it, I uh, like the example on top, it'll prompt you for recipients. You can also define them, like in the second example. Uh, at the bottom picture here we see encrypting a photo. Wonderful. Oh, getting close to the end now. Revoking a key. Let's say you're done with a key and you're ready to get rid of it and create a new one. How do you do that with command line? Easy, right? First you have to use the key ID and go dash dash edit dash key. This will open up. Um, the edit menu for that key, you then type rev sig like we see here and that'll prompt you to revoke it. Um, once that's done you just have to save it. 
once you've revoked it, if you're using key servers, it's a really good idea to upload that revoked key to the key server. Otherwise, people might use your public key that you know they don't know is revoked. So that's always a good idea. After sharing your revoked key with the server or just other people um, face to face, uh, you would well not face to face, but through any other means. Um, your final stage would be delete a key from a key ring. So you've revoked it and you want to delete it. To do this, basically, you have to delete both the secret key and the public key with two separate commands like we see there in this example. And after you've done that, you'll be free to create a new key pair for that email address. Awesome, right? So that pretty much explains all of how to use GPG on command line. For more information, check out the manual page of GPG2. Also check out the documentation on gnupg.org. Yeah, thanks for watching.